All right, guys, so the EU is finally asking China to negotiate. They realize that having a trade war is disastrous. Beijing might hurt immediately, but the EU economies will be devastated. China knows they hold a strong hand and they are demanding all tariffs to be gone by July the 4th. It's all or nothing for the Chinese. But it's important to realize that the sentiment hasn't really changed at all. Europe is still taking a hard line against China. And this is very apparent from Habeck's recent trip. The economy minister of Germany flew all the way to China and he told them to negotiate with Europe and to scold them over trade with Russia. It's really bizarre because this will isolate Germany even more from Chinese money. Now what came from him was some epic level double speak. Habeck told China that EU tariffs on EVs were not punishments. But in the same breath, he said China's trade with Russia is hurting economic relations with Germany and Europe. Das bedeutet, dass der russische Angriffskrieg und die chinesische Unterstützung der russischen Regierung schon jetzt die Handels- und Wirtschaftsbeziehungen zwischen Europa und China schädigt. Und das ist ja eine wichtige Botschaft, dass man an der Stelle nicht eine Neutralität verwechseln darf mit dann doch einem, einer Parteinahme gegen die Sicherheitsinteressen des anderen Landes. There's a reason why China's premier, Li Qiang, snubbed Habeck. He didn't even bother showing up for the meeting. It's because of how Germany approached the situation. Instead of trying to smooth out relations, Berlin delivered scoldings and life lessons. And that's not something China wants to hear. Habeck said, Europe and Germany wouldn't be reducing their dependency on China for raw materials and critical goods if Beijing didn't support Russia's war that you can't separate economic trade with Europe and China's support for Russia. So Habeck just admitted that Germany did punish China over Russia by importing fewer goods. But Europe themselves are still buying a ton of Russian gas. This doesn't make sense. This moral argument doesn't hold water at all. At the same time, Habeck criticized China for using coal to power their industries. The excuse this time is of course global climate change. He wants Beijing to shut down their coal-fired power plants, but that accounts for 60% of China's power supply. In other words, Germany wants China to switch to more expensive fuel to save the environment, but also cripple their own industries. The level of disconnect here is legendary. Beijing, of course, isn't going to listen to this. Why will they? One reason why countries manufacture in China is because of lower energy prices. If we look at China's power generation mix, it's obvious why they are winning the industrial game. They have a good mix of renewable and fossil fuel energy. The majority comes from coal, while solar, nuclear, hydropower, and wind energy are gradually being ramped up. It's because coal is dirt cheap. Even by 2030, fossil fuels will still make up the bulk of their energy mix. If gas is cheaper, they'll of course use more gas. If solar is the cheapest, they can simply install more PVs. This is the true definition of energy independence. This system gives Beijing ultimate flexibility to lower their industrial costs, which allows China to stay the cheapest manufacturer in the world. And the longer China stays on top, the harder it is for the West to sanction their economy. They will have to punish all their trading partners as well. What Europe doesn't understand is they still need China especially when it comes to investment. If you keep scolding them and threatening a trade war, companies aren't going to invest in Europe. Since 2016, China's investment into the EU has been collapsing, from nearly 50 billion euros down to under 7 billion. The remaining investments center around EV factories and battery plants. But what do we see today? Trade barriers on Chinese cars and relations with the West circling the toilet China's EV companies are pulling out and this will be a huge problem for German industries. The entire of Europe will de-industrialize even further. The issue facing Europe is the cost of manufacturing. France and Germany, they have been pumping billions of euros to build up their battery industry. But all the money in the world can't replace two key components, having an integrated supply chain and cheap energy to run the factories day in and day out. Take EV batteries for example, China makes them at around $53 per kilowatt hour. 
the global average is almost 100. That's a very big difference Europe simply can't compete with. This is damaging the German and French auto industry. They have thrown billions into a black hole and EU companies are starting to give up. Northvolt, which is Europe's biggest battery maker, simply can't ramp up their output. The Swedish company simply can't make enough EV batteries at scale. There are quality problems as well. Germany's BM cancelled a 2 billion euro order with them because the batteries weren't up to par. Supply chains in Europe are severely broken compared to China. The industries need investment and access to Chinese expertise. But the entire environment there is getting so toxic that it's risky for companies like BYD like Jili to set up a factory there. While Europe is suffering, another country is cheering and that is Mexico. Because of this decoupling, Chinese companies are moving away from the West. EV giant BYD is building factories around the world in markets that are going to grow. They have a plant in Thailand and they are expanding in Brazil and of course Mexico. And the Mexicans are really excited about it. The BYD plant is going to provide 10,000 jobs for the country. The company is in their final talks and the deal is just about guaranteed. What Europe has lost, Mexico has gained investment money, Chinese technology and building an EV hub in South America. Unlike the West which doesn't want China to come, Mexico is fighting for Chinese investment. BYD received proposals from 23 Mexican states for their plant and they have chosen three potential sites. That's the level of demand for Chinese factories. The company is also on track to sell 50,000 cars in the country as well. Now, BYD isn't building in Mexico to supply the US. That is not their main objective. The 100% tariff is impossible to overcome. By the time the car lands in the US, the price will be too high. Chinese EV companies are building in Mexico to supply Latin America. And that's where their market is growing and where the future lies. The US has gone full protectionist and there's simply no future there anymore. To sum up, basically, it's responding to the tariff saying, we don't really care about it. So what happened yesterday is for the first time ever, the Chinese EV maker launched a new product outside of its home country. First time, actually. And BYD, guess what, chose Mexico. Uh, it launched a mid-sized hybrid electric pickup truck. And the company's chief of America says that uh, we don't have plans to go to the U.S. market. Uh, so this announcement uh, referring to Biden's announcement does not impact us at all. And adding that uh, when we build a Mexican plant, we only consider the Mexican market and other countries' markets. We have not considered the U.S. BYD essentially dumped North America and the U.S. is stuck with higher priced EVs. Decoupling with the U.S. might hurt, but EV companies have other countries to sell to. The BYD shark is the perfect example of a big ticket item sold outside the US. The truck costs around $53,000 and you can only get it in Mexico for now. The US has the biggest market for pickup trucks, which is really bizarre, very awkward for Biden's trade tariffs. Mexicans can now drive a better and cheaper pickup than Americans. So there are real consequences for this trade war, even on the consumer side. Chinese EVs are dominating Latin America and they are not playing around, they are conquering market share. China brands accounts for 87% of EV sales in South America and 20% in Mexico. And when you are selling so many cars to one region in the world, it makes total sense to manufacture where your customers are. Mexico has affordable labor, fewer restrictions on Chinese imports and cheap enough energy. So it kind of makes sense to manufacture there you get punished less unlike Europe or the US. America's trade war with China won't move the needle. It won't bring down inflation. It will cost more of it, especially for people who need cars, which is the majority of the US. The revenue from import taxes is minuscule. Even if you impose tariffs across the board, it will only account for 2% of total revenue. You piss off China, you piss off your domestic market for just 2% more in revenue. In response to this protectionism, US manufacturers will simply jack prices up because they can. There's no outside competitor anymore. This situation is going to play out in the EU as well. Over time, Volkswagen and Mercedes will jack prices up as well. There will be less competition to drive costs down. Western consumers are going to hurt rather badly. Now, in the meantime, China will have a blast selling to everyone else. 
North America will simply be a no man's land to them and Mexico will be the hub for BYD to push all their cars out to the Latin world. It's really critical we understand this chart because it shows us the future of China's market. This is where they will be selling to. While the US and EU markets are big, they will be surpassed. China's manufacturing trade surplus in Asia, Mexico and Latin America will outgrow the West. China's trade surplus with Mexico will hit 3.8% of their GDP, while in Europe it's hardly 1%. The same goes for trade with the US. It actually decreased over the past 4 years. And once you understand this, it's clear that the West weaponizing their consumer markets has a shelf life. This advantage won't last forever. The US and Europe aren't the only game in town. Hitting China with a ton of tariffs will only hurt their own industries. Consumer inflation will stay high. Innovation will go down and the urgency to compete will be gone. In a survey by the Wall Street Journal, they discovered a shocking fact. In the US, amongst the under 40 crowd, 76% of people would happily buy a China-made car. And that's despite the fear-mongering of privacy concerns. And that tells you that price is still a very important factor today. People can't afford stuff anymore. And if you lump in everyone else, over a third of people would still consider a Chinese vehicle. The people have spoken and they want cheaper cars. Europe's tariffs on China aren't going to end well. And I think they kind of realize it and that's why the EU wants to negotiate. I just hope Germany doesn't talk about Russian trade anymore, talk about it again. It's really counterproductive and it will just piss Beijing off again. But let me know what you think. Did Germany make another mistake? And will Europe U-turn on a trade war? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.